In this video, we'll look at the creation of the minimalist base. First, we must find references. There are photos of vases on the official side of the manufacturer, and that's enough. Then we have to model. Simple but effective method is used here. We'll create lighting with the help of a single HDRI and two additional light sources. In conclusion, we will create several materials. The shape is simple. It's a cylinder that turns into a cone, but its backside is flat. I work in millimeters. Customize, unit setup, choose metric, millimeters. OK. On the front view, we create a plan. Create a material with a reference. Apply it to the plan and display a photo. Apply UVW map, bitmap fit and choose the same reference. It aligns the aspect ratio. We need a proper scale. Let's create a box 150 mm high. Scale the plan so the vase coincides with the box. Create a line to the height of the vase. Create a circle and rotate it. This is the thickness of the vase. The line is the height. Go to Compound Objects, Loft, Get Shape and click on the circle. Open Loft and choose Shape. With the Shift held down, create two copies of the circle. Rotate and scale the upper circle in such a way that it repeats the shape of the vase. Change the scale in a proportionate way. In Modify, Path, Steps, we set to a value of 0. Copy the following form and add it to a silhouette as well. By continuing to copy the circle, we finish the form. Apply the Edit Poly modifier and remove the upper cover. Turn the vase and check it with the front view. Select the bottom polygon and use the inset several times. Press the right mouse button and select Collapse. Select Segments, double-click on the edge. Use Chamfer, Amount 1 mm, Segments 2, Tension 0 0.5. Apply Shell, Outer Amount 0, Inner amount 2 mm. Use Turbo Smooth. Our form now smoothed well, but required further work. Turn off the influence of the upper modifiers. Apply Deep Poly before chamfer. Select one edge and with the Shift held down, click on the second edge to select the ring. Turn back on the influence of the upper modifiers and press Connect. Lift new edges until the edge of the object is smooth. Let's divide the vase into two materials. To do that, we need to convert the geometry to editable poly. We start to select polygons from the middle of the edge. Open Graphite Modeling Tools and click on the ring. In the Material Editor, by turning on the Corona Renderer, create a Corona MTL and call it Ceramics. Let's make it white. The next material we call Chrome. Make it black. Apply Ceramics to the selection. Select the remaining area, select the point and with the Shift held down we click on the polygon. Apply the same material to the selection. Go to Polygon Materials IDs, select the polygon with the applied material, click Select ID and invert the selection by pressing Ctrl-I. Apply material. The form is ready, the materials are distributed. Use Turbo Smooth. Let's take this reference and try to recreate the exact light with long shadows. Sander the model by right-clicking on the lower axle counters. Create three variations of the base. To make it easier, create an additional plan, apply it and scale the reference.
let's adjust the location of objects. Create a plan on which the vases will stand. Remove extra segments from the plan and convert it to editable poly. Having chosen two edges, we lift it with a shift held down. Select the edge of the angle and use the chamfer, smoothing the angle. Create a camera. Look at resolution of the image in preferences and transfer it to 3ds Max. Log this value. Arrange the camera in accordance with the reference. For convenience, open the reference in 3ds Max. In the previous versions, you could find a view image file in the rendering tab. Let's open and zoom out the picture. For easy navigation, set the camera angle to the center of the composition and move the background. Now we put the light. First, we replace all the materials with one gray. In the Material Editor window, we choose Bitmap and Interior HDRI. Put a check mark in the Environment checkbox and select Spherical Environment from the list. Drag the map to the settings and run Interactive Render. It's quite dark. So run our map through color correction and then we transfer it to a light map. Start interactive render, check the advanced box, gamma 0.7 and reset common gamma to default in 3ds Max, as I have changed it for other projects. Restart interactive render. Go back to HDRI itself. Now we're looking for appropriate light position by moving the map. Lower the back surface a bit. Let's return chamfer to the place. Next convert it to editable poly, choose polygons, take the horizontal plane and detach. Adjust the edges of the planes so the light passes better. The picture looks quite cold, so we change white balance a little bit. Hold the right mouse button and check that balance between warm and cold is correct. Now we need to remove unwanted shadows from behind. Create a corona light in the shape of a rectangle. Turn off the visibility of all light sources. Find a position to beat the shadows. Raise our backplane. Change the intensity, size and position of the light source. The main thing here is to remove the shadow from behind without effect in the foreground. You can leave it this way. It turned out to be a transition from warm to cold. Copy the light source and put it in front of our objects to create a drawing of additional counters and shadows. Increase directionality to focus the light on vases. Find an acceptable position. Continue to move the light source until the satisfactory result. Lower the intensity and increase the overexposure compensation. Save the render to history. By turning off the additional light, calculate the render again and save it as well. Now let's compare with the lights on to the left and with the lights off to the right. Extra light gives more volume and makes the shadows more interesting. The light is ready. Create a new material and apply it to a horizontal surface. Make it gray and reflective. Add the surface to the exception and then start interactive. Apply Corona bitmap 
and select a texture. Display it in the workspace. Let's pick another texture. Increase the reflective index. Lower the glossiness until the slight reflection shows up. Next material. Let's create a Corona MTL, set the color, apply the material, add the object to the exception, make the material reflective and add the map to glossiness. Run the interactive render. Display the texture. Now we see that it doesn't fit correctly. Use UVW map, box, bitmap, fit, and choose the same map. Lower glossiness until the slight blurry reflection appears. Now let's do the vase materials. Add one of the vases to the exception. Add a reflection and lower the level in diffuse to get rid of overexposure. A little more reflection and glossiness. Chromatic material. Increase Fresnel and set the reflection to 1. Lower glossiness a bit. Give curvature to the reflection. To do this, add a texture to the bump. Display the texture and apply the UVW map, box, bitmap fit, match the scale. We see a severe distortion. So let's blur the picture. Slightly change the reflection. For this, we turn on the visibility and reflection of one of the sources and compare. A negligible impact, but you can live it. Now try to turn on the visibility of the second one. No, glare appears on the back surface, so turn it off. Let's move away from the reference and repeat my version. Copy the material. Replace color, make it practically black, set golden color in the reflection. Apply the material and remove the check mark from replacement of materials box. Next, remove the background from the reflections. To do this, uncheck the visibility in the reflection and refraction. Drag UVW map onto the vases. Put the plants to revitalize the picture. Add modals and place them into vases. If you found this video interesting, like it and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.